everyone. Today we are going for a walk to the Summer Garden. Officially, the Summer Garden is a branch of the Russian Museum. It is free of charge, but it has limited working hours from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m., except Tuesdays when it has a day off. Today is Saturday, so let's take a walk. This was decorating the southern entrance to the summer gardens attracts everyone's attention. No wonder, it's five meters high together with its pedestal. It was made of porphyry and granite. The vase was a royal gift from Charles XIV of Sweden to Nicholas I of Russia. It was a gesture of goodwill and peace between our two countries after numerous Russo-Swedish wars. The vase was made in Elfdalen, Sweden, and then transported to St. Petersburg by sea. It looks like one solid piece, but it consists of five smaller pieces. So, two Swedish masters who were traveling together with this royal gift, they were supposed to assemble the vase in St. Petersburg once it arrives. However, Nicholas I refused the uh, assistance of Swedish masters and only Russian craftsmen assembled the vase here. In the 19th century, two small pavilions appeared on the grounds of the summer garden. They were called coffee house and tea house. You can see the tea house behind me now. Both pavilions nowadays house cafeterias. This is a monument to a famous fable writer, Ivan Andreevich Krylov. The characters of his fables are all animals, but you can easily recognize people in them. Look, this is a monkey, a bear, a eagle, squirrel, mice, a cat, a lion, a frog, a one more monkey, a snake, an elephant. Peter the Great had sculptures and fountains in the summer garden. The water to the fountains was pumped from the nearby nameless river. Later, people started to call this river the Fontenka, meaning the fountain river. Unfortunately, in the times of Catherine the Great, a devastating flood destroyed all the fountain system, and throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, there were no fountains here. The fountains that you see now appeared as a result of the large-scale restoration works conducted from 2009 till 2011. In this little yard, there was a bestiary. You can see small cages where originally different animals and birds were kept. Nowadays, uh, you can only see photos, luckily, and inside this building of the bestiary over here, there is a history museum dedicated to the excavation works that were conducted over here. Peter the Great brought sculptures for the summer gardens from Italy. There were period replicas from ancient Roman and Greek originals. Peter the Great had signs next to all the sculptures explaining Roman and Greek mythology to unsavvy Russian people. Originally, the summer garden bordered with the Neva River. This beautiful fence appeared in the times of Catherine the Great. It was created by architect Yuri Felton. 
Over here, you can see there is a flood mark. The highest flood in the history of St. Petersburg reached the mark 4 meters, 10 centimeters, and it dates back to November 1824. The Summer Garden is the oldest garden of our city. It was laid out in 1704, the next year after St. Petersburg's foundation. And approximately at the same time, Peter the Great commissioned to rebuild a small Swedish mansion located in this place. And the first architect of our city, Domenico Trezzini, created such a modest Dutch-style palace for the Tsar. Peter the Great lived on the ground floor and his wife, Catherine I, lived on the first floor. There were her personal apartments. And in the place where we are standing now, there used to be a small harbor. Peter the Great wanted to have a boat access to his summer residence.